Welcome to the Tap Room Exclusive. I am your host, Dean Zarbaugh. Today's show is brought to you by House of Helga. Are you a brewery looking for some vibrant, stunning artwork to slap on that freshly bottled or canned beer? Contact House of Helga for all your design needs. They've worked with Masthead, Streetside, and yours truly here at the Tap Room Exclusive. You can check out Kyla's entire portfolio of incredible work at houseohelga.com. On today's show, I chat with Bascule Brewery's brewer Chris Camboris over their tasty cocoa mango. But first, a taste of what's going on in the craft beer world with this week's Tasting Glass. Do you like metal? Do you like helping those in need? Be sure to join Bascule Brewery on Monday, July 22nd for Metal Monday at 1397 Colorado Avenue, Lorain, Ohio, 44052. You can find out more information at facebook.com slash Bascule Brewery and Public House. Also, it was announced last week via our friend Rob at Northeast Ohio Craft Brewery News that Pennsylvania's Voodoo Brewery is planning to open a location this year on Lee Road in Cleveland Heights. Thanks to Voodoo and Rob, I had the opportunity to take a sneak peek at the work in progress facility. Don, Kathy, and Jake are truly passionate about bringing this vision to life, and I, for one, can't wait to see the final product. You can check out Rob's article for more information at neocraftbrewerynews.com. To follow the progress of Voodoo Brewery Cleveland Heights, go to facebook.com slash CLE. And while you're there, be sure to follow Northeast Ohio Craft Brewery News at facebook.com slash NEOCBN for the latest in Northeast Ohio Craft Brewery News. The Foundry Social announced last week that their ultimate entertainment complex is coming to Medina this fall. Foundry Social will include high-voltage indoor karting, my friend's Franklin Brewing Company, a full kitchen, and awesome activities such as duck pin bowling, billiards, bocce ball, pinball, arcade games, and more. Follow the official Foundry Social page for the latest updates at www.thefoundrysocial.com. Boss Dog in Cleveland Heights and Madcap Brewing in Kent have both announced they have begun canning. According to Boss Dog, cans should start hitting local shelves in August, while Madcap's Gold Flash Golden Ale and the Bullet IPA are both available in 16-ounce four-packs at their tap room and a few local bottle shops. Stay tuned to their Facebook pages for more information. A research firm called CNR Research has just released a list of the top 25 cities with the most craft breweries. Only one Ohio city made the list, Cincinnati, at 25th. The top five cities were Kalamazoo, Michigan at 5th, Boulder, Colorado was 4th, Bend, Oregon ranked 3rd, Asheville, North Carolina ranked 2nd, and the city with the most breweries is Portland, Maine. For a full list, visit crresearch.com slash blog. Log on to Facebook.com slash The Taproom Exclusive or on Twitter at Taproom Podcast to give your thoughts on the list. It's almost time for Beer Women Rock 2019. Join Beer Women Rock at Jukebox on July 27th from 2 p.m. until 6 p.m. to raise money for our friends and neighbors at Drink Local, Drink Tap, and win some awesome raffle prizes at the same time. If you can't make it out to the event but still want to donate, you can find the link at Facebook.com slash JukeboxCLE. Be sure to get your tickets to Brewfest Waterfront District 6 taking place at Black River Landing in Lorraine on Saturday, August 10th. VIP tickets are only on sale until July 28th. Grab yours before they're gone. VIP tickets come with a sample glass, 15 four-ounce samples, an exclusive sample from Franklin Brewing Company, food from Smash, the world's greatest food truck, an exclusive American Apparel Brewfest t-shirt, and a Brewfest drawstring bag to collect your goodies from the event and your own private air-conditioned area with private restrooms. Limited to 100 tickets at BrewFestWD.com. General admission tickets are also available. Log on to get yours now. And I will be at BrewFest this year broadcasting live, so stop by and say hi. All right, my interview with Chris Camboris, brewer for Basco Brewery and Public House in Lorraine, Ohio, is up next. So tell the people a little bit about Coco Mango. What's the flavor profile? What kind of beer is it? Uh, tell the people a little bit about it. So Coco Mango is a real fun one to make. Um, <laughs> I remember brewing this one for our very first fundraiser that Fred and I were, were uh, uh, trying to promote at St. Lad's uh, private, uh, private Club around here in Lorraine. And um, it started out as just a very solid IPA. I almost felt guilty for trying to add any kind of adjuncts to it because <laughs> it was the first IPA that I really nailed. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to try and mess this up. <laughs> um, so, but Coco That's Mango. That's what bringing a brewer is all about, uh, though. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it was, it was just it was a very crazy time because that was when um, 
um, if I if I can give you some history here, that that happened at a time that I was going through a divorce, moved back with my mom, and now I got this fundraiser to try and pitch this brewery oh, to man. people that no one ever heard a of. A lot of spinning plates. A lot of spinning plates. So anyway, I had this idea to do a a an, an IPA that would um, really try to um, highlight the the uh, the Hispanic community here in Lorraine. Uh, so when I think Hispanic, I think of these tropical flavors. I think of coconuts, um, and so. Um, it's infused with real mango, real coconut, and and I and I luckily nailed it on my first crack, and I haven't changed the recipe since. There you go. That's always lucky, right? <laughs> you know, you, you can you can never predict if it's going to come out well at, right off the rip, and you know, uh, for the first time, that's awesome. If I, if I may, yeah, I, I want to, I need to give credit to Columbus Brewing for um, the inspiration behind Coco Mango because I was at a brew fest. Uh, many years back where they had did a firkin version of Bodhi aged over coconut. Really? And, and, and that, the flavor of coconut and hops was just so harmonious. I was like, I have to try to replicate this. So so thank you, Columbus Brewing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and for, for me, uh, it's just, th- this is just my own preconception. I I hear coconut, I, I immediately am like, hmm. But this is a nice balance. The mango really helps. Yeah, it's it's you know, not it's it, not it's suntan not, lotion in a glass. Yeah, that's what some people they, they hear the cocoa or they hear the coconut <clears> and they that's kind of the automatic. You think uh, it's gonna taste like get. Ric Flair looks? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, man, hot dog skin, um, <laughs> leathery, super leathery. Anyway, <laughs> this, this is way, way off All time. Right, yeah. But no, co- but Coco Mango is such a nice balance. On on both sides of of those flavors, how how is it? How hard is it to kind of balance those flavors in that beer? Because they're they're um, two pretty distinct flavors. Luckily for me, you know, I I I failed and, and, and succeeded at a lot of uh, cooking recipes to give me a bit of like a, a gauge when it comes to uh, ingredient additions. I I've I've heard enough horror stories to know that that you know. Uh, it's easy to go overboard on flavors, so I always kind of follow the rule of thumb of, you know, if you could, if you could just taste it, that's enough. Okay. Um, and so I, I started with um, in a forty gallon batch. I, I started with just a few pounds of mango, and and a few pounds of coconut, and I and I and I rack the beer over top of that, let it sit for three or four days, and then I infuse it back in. And uh, and I, I was happy with the results, and and so we've just been sticking with it. So it's kind of dumb luck and a little bit of intuition. And it's such a distinct flavor too. It's it's different. You don't really see something like this around. I mean, you, obviously the, the Columbus, the one one off that they did with Bodie, but right. it's it's it sets itself apart from everything else that's out there. Yeah, um, we we developed a bit of a cult following for it. Uh, you know, we we were talking earlier about um, uh, about Brewfest, and and um, it's it's almost become kind of a uh, uh, I don't know. I, it's a, it's a surreal moment for sure. I remember last year we were we were we announced that we were going to tap the Coco Mango at six p.m. The, the event started at three, and. So okay, you know, we, we, we look down and, and we were just getting ready to switch the kegs and we look up and all of a sudden there's a line from our booth clear to the entrance and, oh, and wow. we just kinda said, Who's here for Coco Mango? And the whole crowd just went ballistic. Oh and that's an awesome feeling. It was surreal. So, you know, it's just been you know, people people really look forward to it and, and we just try to uh, try to uh, keep good on our word that we'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a seasonal. So, uh, uh, what generally? What's the time frame on on it being being out there for people to try? Uh, it's it's ever increasing. It started off as just a one time beer. If you if you missed it, you missed it. But I mean, um, we we would be foolish to not try to keep keep that on for the entire summer. Um, I've never been one to try and uh, create like a false scarcity for something and right, right. and and you know have people lined around our building for some oh, kind of special release. I, I, not yeah. to knock it, but um, but it's just not us because that would be very that would be pretentious of us. So uh, I'm 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 
gradually trying to increase my production on it. This year, I'm going to brew it three times, and, and nice. that should be just enough to get us through the summer. There's, there's going to be a little scarcity on it because I do have uh, a lot of other beers to tend to, and I only, brew, I only brew 45 gallons at a time, and, and, and we have, a, as you can see, a pretty packed house tonight. So, Absolutely. You know, we, we, we can't You've gone through back. a couple kegs already. Yeah. And it, but that, I, it seems that, like, we were talking in the first episode about how loyal your following is and how uh, how how much they love you guys that they seem to know what's going on with you guys. So if they come in and they know, okay, they wanted Coco Mango, but Hey, it's out for a minute. Yeah. They seem to pre- be pretty understanding because like, Hey, it's a small batch. Like yeah. we're, we're, that, that's the type of repertoire, uh, and, 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 uh, correspondence that I want to have with my clientele. That's, that's something that, you know, It'd be one thing if you're walking into a McDonald's and saying, "What do you mean you're out of the you French know, fries, right? Or what do you hamburger, you're right?" You, and 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 here it's a different story. You know, we are we're a neighborhood brewery, and you know, it's it's if you were to get if you were to go see a local band, um, you, you don't expect it to sound exactly like the album every time. Right. You know, so so yeah, I, I want you to know what song we're playing, but I don't expect you to or I don't want you to come in here expecting to hear the studio version of the song. So, you know, just come in, listen to something different, you know, yeah. try something new. And um, if we have if, if we have what you're looking for, great. Uh, if we don't, I can assure you we're going to have something that, that is going to, uh, you know, wow your palate. Yeah, you guys are making some solid beers. And talking about the Brewfest, every time I go to, like, water, Brewfest Waterfront District or whatever, and you guys are there, you guys seem to almost always have, like, one of the longest lines <laughs> For everything, and it, it, that's a great thing. That's got to be amazing feeling for you guys. I, it was funny because the first year I didn't have time enough to pick up my head to even know what you were talking about. People were telling me you had the longest line, and I was like, I was too busy pouring beers, I didn't yeah. see it. Um, and and yeah, it's a very flattering thing. Uh, and 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 I at first I, I thought, well, we're we're the new kid on the block. Um, but there's something to be said about when our customers come in here. And you start to get the same compliments all the time. You must be, you must be hitting a nerve, and and that's something that we are grateful to say we enjoy here. Is the feedback that we get is very consistent. Um, I, I I can't imagine, um, you know, that that a corporate location is getting customers coming in, thanking them for being open, right. thanking them for being here, and and. No, it's it's just a it's just a, a gratifying, personal, intimate, in, uh, interaction that we have with our clients that I I could say few people get to enjoy, and we're very grateful for that. Yeah, absolutely. Like you you come in here to Bascule, which is uh, on the corner of uh, Colorado in Kansas, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you come in here, and on any given night, you know, Chris will be here, maybe Fred will be here. Mm-hmm. The people who own this place, that's not like you go to some maybe some corporate place or something. That's not always the case. That they're not always going to be there. I mean, it's 8 o'clock at night. It's 8.30. <laughs> the fact that you guys are even still in the building. I mean, granted, you guys do 4 to uh, 3 to 3. Is it 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock? No, when we open, three, yeah. three, 3 to 10. 3 <laughs> to 10. Granted, you're doing mainly evening hours. Mm-hmm. But for the, for the fact that you guys are actually here on premise that late at night interacting with your customers that that goes a long way with people yeah i mean it, you know they they say that uh you know if you do what you love you're, you're you're not really working and uh it's it's a pleasure to be here it's a pleasure to interact with the people that help made make this possible and there are a few nights that i can't be here and they they get it you know yeah, they, it they, happens. they saw me plugging away the first two years you know yeah, you have a life you have a kid you know you need you need time for yourself, absolutely. But yeah, yeah. the the FaceTime that people get with you and with Fred is unmatched at damn near any other brewery, especially the corporate ones. Yeah, I, and mean, I think that drives people to feel more connected. They they do. You know, it's it's so funny. <laughs> How often do you go <laughs> into a place? And, and and the boss gets chewed out. I didn't see you here. You know, <laughs> right. like, I get chewed out sometimes. Like, where were you? We had an awesome night. I didn't see you. I it's brought like, five just... of my friends. <laughs> you weren't here. Right. How dare! <laughs> but that's a good feeling, though. At the it end is. of the day, people want to be here. They want to be around you. They want to be able to share the 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 ambiance of this place and yeah. and be able to to hang out and, and have a good time. That's. That's what I feel like when you walk in here. Everybody's ready to have a good time. Yeah. Everybody's willing to come up, talk to each other. Yeah. 
and you don't get that at every other brewery is sometimes people are very much I'm going to stick to myself I'm not going to talk to anybody but either you know I'm sitting at the bar here and 20 different people you know like oh what are you drinking you know like oh how's your day going you interacting with people that they don't even know and that's awesome and our, that, our our unofficial motto is you will leave here with more friends than you came in with absolutely you get that feeling when you walk in here yeah. it's 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 a great it's a great feeling as a as a customer yeah it's, it's a great feeling as an owner and I, <laughs> and I i i always i always try to emphasize to all of our supporters uh just how grateful we are that that they uh you know don't just come in here and i don't know just you know, just sit down, throw back a beer, and walk out the door. Right. You know, they're they're always willing to uh, engage not just with us, but the person sitting next to them, and that's that's when you know you've you've developed a very good a very good crowd. Absolutely, and you guys are dog friendly too, which is awesome. So you yeah. guys can bring uh, dogs in to in inside actually, right? That's one of the benefits of not actually having our own kitchen. You know, if you want to have a have your pup in here, bring your pup in here as as long as. Uh, you know, you're a good owner, and, and and you can you can say for a fact that your dog gets a well uh, gets along well with others and other dogs. And yeah. Then you know you're that's more the problem with my it. dog. My dog <laughs> cannot come here because as soon as he sees another animal, he is just nope. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a dog or groundhog, <laughs> whatever. We have groundhogs at my, at my place right now, and he's just going absolutely nuts because no. oh, these these dogs are great. We have one dog in here right now that only barks when we applaud for the singer of uh, the. And karaoke. that's great. The dog just wants to be involved too. He wants right. to clap. He can't clap with his right. paws, so right. he's going to bark. Exactly. You know, I, let me be a part of it. Like, like yeah. that, but that, again, that also goes to the whole community aspect of of what you guys are doing here. Yeah. It, it's so it's so awesome. Um, you know, like I said, I grew up South Lorain County to, to see the revitalization going on around here to, the, to hear people want to come to Lorain yeah. makes me so happy yeah. because for the longest time it was, Oh, why are you going to Lorain? Yeah. What's in Lorain? Yeah. It, well, now there's stuff in Lorain. There, there, there certainly is. I mean, you know, go, go to speak of the devil on, on any given night and they're having to turn people away. That's amazing. You know, and, 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 and and people told them that that'll never happen. People told them you have no business being here. Right. And when <laughs> one of my favorite comebacks on social media, because I had to be that guy policing our Facebook page. Absolutely. Um, you know, when someone says, well, why, you know, why on the east side? Why, Lorraine? It's terrible. And I, my first response was, yeah, sure could use a brewery. <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, like when you have a when you have a dark, closed off room in your house right. and it's overgrown with 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 with. Uh, what do you, you know, cobwebs and, and whatever? Do you, do you just shut the door and ignore it, or no. or do you do you throw that door wide open, get under the bed with a broom, uh, flip the lights on, you know, start dusting all the blinds? I mean, that's that's the way we look at it. Is you know, not not that the east side is anywhere near a bad side of town. Right. I mean, it is. Um, we absolutely absolutely enjoy it here. We're on one of the busiest intersections in the rain. Yeah. And we've got some, you know, great storefront windows that that showcase everything that's happening right now. Um, There's just a, a lot. People still have kind of preconceived notions about the area, and it's hard to get people out of their out of their head. You know, yeah. where if they've already made up their mind, that, okay, this is a quote unquote bad part of town. That's that's what they're going to say. But you got to really work and get them to yeah. see. Oh, hey, I this mean, isn't it, every every city has its. You know, what are you going to do? You can stop going to New York because right. because New York has crime. New York yeah. has tons of crime. Absolutely, it's the crime going. capital of right. the world. You, probably. You know, so, so with Lorraine, it's all a matter of choosing how you want to see things. Absolutely. Uh, do Do you want to see it for what it what it can be? Do you want to see it for what it was? Um, you know, do you want to focus on the positive, or do you want to focus on the fact that yes, there are some neglected things that are going on. Um, you know, politically, uh, you, you know, as, as far as the, the properties go, yeah, they're, they're, it has its problems. But, you know, go into any gated community and tell me how much fun you're having. Right. You know, when it's all just, you know, it looks like a, it looks like a creepy scene from uh, Edward Scissorhands where everything yeah. is just so perfect and sterile and plastic right. wrapped. I don't want that. I want no. some grit. I want some personality. And Lorraine has that personality. And, and I guarantee you, I, I challenge you to find better people than what you find here in Lorraine. You really, you can't. I mean, it's just the, 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 the amount of great people around here is, is insane. 
As far as the Coco Mango goes, anything else you want to get out about this, uh, its availability or uh, its you flavor can, profile or anything? We, we, we love to do brown bag burgers, the courtesy of being the first outside account that taps uh, Coco Mango. Ooh. They were the first account to come in here and, uh, and ask us, hey, we, you know, we want your beer. And I said, well, it's not that easy. I, I right. said, there's, there's, there's paperwork I have to do. We're not ready to sell to outside accounts and, and all this stuff. And uh, the owner of Brown Bag literally wrote me a check on the spot. What, what's your registration fee to register this beer? Wow. And he wrote me a check on the spot on top of paying for the beer. So, wow. um, you know, uh, Josh Jameson and Brown Bag Burgers will always, always be the first account to ever get uh, Coco Mango. That's awesome. Um, and, and I highly recommend people go check them out because, you know, they, they are... Despite you know the fact that yes there are two locations it's a local business right um, and and um, you know they they are definitely trying to do their part to to highlight Lorraine absolutely I've only heard good things about them I haven't been out there yet I have I've been meaning to I've been meaning to because I am a huge cheeseburger nut oh my god they have a build uh, your so, own burger menu and uh, it's just fantastic I'm, I'm gonna onion I'm gonna straws drool. oh okay <laughs> done done we're going there right now we're cutting off this episode uh, tune in next week for another all new episode here at Bascule Brewery yeah.